Today, I would like to share something personal with you. As a chef, I have been cooking for over many years. Through these times, when I was cooking, I looked for some gadgets and they were not there, or I didn't like something about their design. So what I did is I started to design some of the things which I found that didn't exist. And then it became a brand called Refikada. Now it is eight years old and some very nice products have been added up through the years. And I would like to share 10 of them, which might also help you in your kitchen through your workflow, make it look nicer, make it more fun and make it more easy. I know it's not food, but it's something about cooking. So I wanted to share with you. I would like to start with this funnel. First, it was a piece like this. Why is it good for? Like when you make something in the jar, you don't want the round of the jar to get dirty. So you put this funnel in, you put the tomato paste, pepper paste, or a jam in. Or if you want to make a dessert in a glass, you don't want the sides to get dirty and you want the glass to look really nice, you use this one, it's so good. Later, I designed a spice rack like this, so that all kinds of spices are under my hand. And then sometimes I have to refill them, so I need a smaller funnel. I made this one. I made it in such a way that this gets in like this, so that like if you want to pour something big into a small thing it's easy to do or if you're just gonna fill a little thing like this you can use it like this you'll be able to fill small stuff as well one other upside of this is usually they make these kind of funnels through plastic and plastic have migration but stainless steel don't stainless steel or aluminium designed funnels are much better so it looks cool and it's much healthier than the plastic ones Number nine is these beautiful wooden spoons. The beauty of these wooden spoons is these are made from a wood called shimshir. Good thing about shimshir is it's very dense wood. And what does it change? For example, you make something like a stew with onion, garlic, etc., and you mix it. And then when you smell the spoon, you might get an onion smell. But in shimshir, when you wash it in the sink and then come back, it doesn't smell at all. Like this is probably five, six years old spoon and it's still so good because it's very dense. How does it change? Afterwards, for example, I make a dessert and I have to like make a sherbet with sugar and water. And then if this was smelling garlicky or oniony, it would ruin the whole thing. But with these wooden spoons, it's much better. And it's just wood itself. You just have to oil it time to time, once in like two, three months. And it's great and it's very, very, very durable. And the beauty of this is these are done in a very small village by a very nice oldish man. He carves it with his hands and these are all handmade. And through time, it's not just that old man, but it's like several villages making wooden spoons, spatulas, just for us. Another thing which I really love are my, these are quite new, cutlery sets. And I want to tell you about this cutlery set. I used to go to London and in London there are really cool cutlery sets, but they are, as you know, the pound is 12 Turkish lira and it's very, very expensive for us. And I also like aged cutlery. Bahar has several racks of cutlery from like one spoon, one spatula, one knife kind of thing. But if you want to buy a whole old set, then it is like a small fortune. So I said like, can't the cutlery be new? but kind of washed. So I have chosen a design which could be very modern or which could be very classic at the same time. And when I washed it like this, it looked really old and it was affordable. So I made seven different pieces for the dessert and for the main course. And to also together we have, this is our teaspoon. Actually, this is called the dessert spoon in Turkish and this is a teaspoon. So we also have like this small teaspoon which you can use when you make a meze or which you can use when you like want to 
have a little sauces so you can use it for the sauces as well so seven pieces for six people which is 42 pieces a set and i love it some of my friends like said Rikika, we like the design but we don't want it in an old way so we made this shiny version as well for that and for some of my friends they said like okay i want a lighter kind of knife and spoon i don't like heavy spoons but I prefer something which is when I take it in my hand, I want it to be light. So uh, we had another a modern design, more geometric design with lighter stainless steel. So this set came to the picture. So we have three different and quite affordable cutlery sets in Refikadan after eight years. Maybe, you know, Turkey is a very textile full country in many of the things we wear in from zara to h&m etc a lot of it is made in turkey but when it came to kitchenware like the towels that we use to like take the water out of something to clean the surfaces we didn't have very exciting designs and very exciting fabrics turkey has a place called denizli which is like the heaven of textile and in the old days we used to do these textile in something called karatezga which is wooden workbenches each time it goes back and forth a line of textile is built and these were really old and it was getting out of fashion but make the old producers take back those old wooden benches and put them in reuse we came up making these these are called peşkir in turkish these great towels and they come in really nice different colors red green black blue beige afterwards another thing came to my mind also for the water to be really soaked well you know babies have something like called the muslin towel muslin towel is very soft the threads are really dense so that it soaks a lot of water that's why it's very good for the baby's skin it doesn't harm baby skin so i said okay this is great for the babies but what are we lacking we need that soaking of water and nice design in the kitchen as well so i took those muslin fabric together with Shehnaz she's a designer that also works for Refikadun as well and we came up with these great colored muslin towels in like several I think five colors gray mint green blue orange reddish color as well and the towels came to our lives and we love them for example if you want to dry something in the kitchen it could be a plate it could be a glass or it could be a surface and if you put the towel and when it goes through and water is left there or marks are left there it gives me bad feelings so this way never happened again so i love it and each time for example some people send me please Rifika, try this towel and if it that doesn't happen i really hate the idea so this is what we have achieved and i love using it Another thing, the spatulas we use to take a cake or for example, there's a burger which is cooking and you have to take it out. If it's like a triangle like this, it doesn't work. Or for example, we can buy from the store something like this, some long one. What it doesn't do is this angle here is very low and it's very hard to get into a small houseware pan to a small pan like this and you don't feel it as it's part of your hand so what i did in a very old town in turkey i found an old spatula and i loved it so much and it came back to life with our crew and what it is is the angle is here helps to really get into the pan while you want to like take it out and because here is really wide and you can like, get in and without any part of it falling down you can hold whatever you have in your hand or when you try to prepare a plate a nice one and you want to design it this angle from your hand and whatever you hold it really goes well for example when i try to do that it has to be this way and if you i do this it falls something happens so there's this magical angle so we did it that way again it's not very long so that it can get into small pans as well it's not my original design. I have found it in Pinterest actually and did some several changes in the design for it to be bigger and more like durable is this cutting board. What this cutting board is about is when you're chopping something, you need to like take it to somewhere. And usually if that somewhere is not there, it falls from the sides. But what we did, we put a plate near it so that everything can fall on one side without spilling to anywhere else. And also the size is very generic. So with not just its own plate, but whatever like dessert plate, if you have, for example, 
in your home like this you can change the plate this is let's say the tomatoes then we are gonna do the onions we put the onions and we put it on the side so it's very very helpful and sometimes when it has to be fast and you don't have the plate in your hand you can take it to on top of a pot and just like throw it and with this little eye here without spilling anywhere else it can just fall into the pot itself now the holiday season is coming so it also means gift season is coming you can put like different names and if you just put name our crew is gonna card your name and then send it to you for you to give it as a present to someone so this is the cutting board i love and time to time you can oil it with some olive oil or mineral oil and then it comes back to life probably i'm using this cutting board for two years and it's as you can see it looks brand new as you know turkey has its own spice market over maybe over 500 years we love using spices because ottoman empire was like a center of the world for some time it was gathering spices from all over the world it's been for centuries so we love our spices and we love the really good quality in the spices so we have a set here for the main spices which is in turkish cooking the cumin the red pepper the black pepper but it's coarsely grated and i'll show you why and how mint and thyme at the same time it's very hard to find sumac around we also made sumac and isot pepper as well why black pepper is coarsely grinded anything when you divide into pieces it gives away its oil some of its taste so if you grind it very finely like a dust usually they do black pepper like that it goes away so that's why people use the grinders in black pepper but when you're cooking trying to make a recipe sometimes black pepper each time grinding it becomes pain so when it's coarsely grinded it also has a taste it gives some of the taste to the food and the rest as an ingredient in your mouth why french people use white peppers because it's for the bechamel sauce etc it doesn't give the color but when the black pepper is like a dust it gives its color to all the food but when it's coarsely grinded it also doesn't do that and it becomes amazing the more black pepper you use you want to use more black pepper for sure so this is kind of really simple ingredient but a great ingredient to those spice mixtures i also have a dolma mixture and we love our köfte in turkey we have about over 350 different types of köfte we love our köfte spices so i made a mixture myself together with burak and this is the köfte mixture together with it the pomegranate sour an olive oil from magician woman called Selin, which she collects her olives in the morning and at night she crushes them in such a beautiful way and she has many many awards around the world with her olive oil so we have it in like small size so that you can try we have a bigger version as well together with those my brother grows his own wheat and we make flour with it and the gluten level is really low there is no pesticide like there isn't even an organic pesticide there's no pesticide every year we have like very small amount of flour that we can share with you guys and you can find my brother's flour in Rifikadan too together with these rice lentil beans chickpeas these are all genetically modified this is so bad but they modify it so that like less bad things come but these are all organic and these are all as they were thousand years ago as you can see from the chickpeas they are rather small and when you look at the lentils maybe some of the people might remember in the old days we had to clean the lentils this is a lentil that you have to clean a bit and this is how it used to be so these are great stuff that why I put them in Refikadan because we forget some of the beauties in life we think that oh this is how it's gonna be from now on it doesn't have to be there are still people who's trying to stand away from the winds of change and I think we have to celebrate them and this is a way to support and celebrate them and for example now this is the season to make pomegranates the producer sends us videos of Refika look I'm making your pomegranate juice and this is a great way to celebrate life so to Aşkın abi the winner of my heart is this gönü bol this is a big tea glass which looks like me 
In Turkey, we drink our teas in small cups, but it's never enough. So what I wanted to do is make a bigger one that I can hold. And when it's cold, when I want to get hot, I let it warm me up. The beauty of this design is we designed it with Bahar and very good sculptures, Tan Mavitan, together with him. On the top level, when you put the really hot tea, it starts to evaporate and it starts to get cool. But as you drink, because it's too big and it's really hot, it is warm. Like, for example, I'm probably talking for 10 minutes now and it's really, really hot still. And when it goes down to this level, there's a bottleneck here. So when the hotness starts to evaporate, a cloud is formed here so that it keeps the tea glass even when you're outside in the cold weather hot and it makes it stay hot for a longer amount of period. In Turkey, we brew our tea in big cups, but I know in the world tea is drunken in tea bags, like coffee cups kind of thing, or English style teacups. But what's wrong about English type of teacups for me? Because I love my tea really hot. The surface area is very big, so it gets cold very fast in London. I have stayed there for a while and even studied there. Even in two minutes, the tea gets cold. Also, the tea has a beautiful color. Also, the herbal teas, green, pink, purple, have great colors. Seeing the color, helps to heal. Seeing the color helps you enjoy it more and also having the warmness with you while having your own herbal tea is also really great. So I believe this is a great cup for that. And I also have a secret. I was never a big whiskey fan, but after this tea glass, I have became one. When you look at the ideal whiskey glass that they say it's great, it's very much like a Turkish tea glass, a bigger one. But whiskey inside the glass and it has this moist and nice smell and you have to like taste it and smell it at the same time and shake this for some reason i really don't know but it really helps and then smell it and this glass is so great for that and if you start to drink whiskey with this tea glass i can say that you're gonna drink much more than you usually do experience this talking so in turkey this glass is called gönlü balls there isn't a direct translation, but it's kind of like generous hearted. And you'll see why the name is like that once you have your glass and drink it in that a tea or a herbal tea or whiskey or coffee, whatever you want. Guys, we weren't able to decide the ninth one. So I have two options, you decide. It could be these stands, which are my mom's favorite. I took some photographs of really old tiles from Abdülmecid Köşk. It's a very nice kind of small palace. And I have printed them on this glass. You can use this glass as a cutting board. You can use this glass under your plate, like a serving platter, or you can use it as a cheese plate, whatever you like. One option is that. The second option is the enamelware. Enamelware was banned, not banned, but looked down for ages in Turkey for some reason which I don't understand. What we did, small handmade places were making very small amounts of enamelware with some flowers on, with some designs on, etc. What I did was I changed their molds into more like a serving plate and in different designs, small meze plates with different colors. When we first made it, people said, oh, really, enamelware? At the time, Europe, especially England, was using a lot of enamelware in America as well, but Turkish people weren't. So people start to use it more and more. And lots of other people who gave up on doing enamelware started to make it. And now almost people are sending these enamelwares almost everywhere in the world. So we have great colors, green, blue, yellow, gray, light blue, red, etc., etc. And we have like small place for like breakfast or meze, etc., etc. So I wasn't able to decide which one should come and I shouldn't let my mom down. So I also talked about her. Finally, the winner, which has a lot of stories, is this knife design that we have made. So why did I design the knife? First of all, of course, we use our knives a lot. But what I have realized, knives are designed for experts and chefs. And usually they are big. Even the smaller ones are big. Only, I believe, 
IKEA makes them in like smaller sizes. And it's very nice if you cannot have an access to Rifika and you can buy IKEA knives, which are even smaller and very handy. But a chef knife should be a part of your hand. Like it should be feel like an extension of your hand. Mainly European cuisine has the classical chef's knife. That classical chef's knife for very good for roughly chopping and thinly slicing. But in Turkey, we almost mince everything. Very thinly dice and chop a lot of things. We have minced meat, we mince the onions and parsley, etc., etc. And it's like a mezzaluna. Using the rocking action is very important. So I try to design the knife in such a way it has this rocking action and it's not very long. So it feels very much like the part of my arm. And also we have this Selçuk design, which is eight sided star, which I love a lot. It was before Ottomans that design. I love the geometry, but this is not just for just designing. This carving also helps when you're cutting something for it to not to stick to the knife so much. So it has that as well. The rocking action is easy and it doesn't have a bolt here. When there's a bolt, for example, you're cutting a potato, the potato get stuck here so it doesn't happen in this one as well so and also for the home use the knife shouldn't be very heavy but it shouldn't also be very light so it took me a year and a half to design this and i love using it very much so that's it the 10 products and their stories we have many more actually that we didn't talk about if you want to check I'm also going to put the link to the Etsy homepage. You can buy it from everywhere in the world. Shipping prices is a little pain, I know. I'm trying to work on that with the team. Our experience isn't much in that, but I wanted to share it with you. Hope you like this. I'm sorry, like in Turkey, we are not used to talking about us and what we do a lot, but I really wanted to share what we have tried. And believe me, this is not like a brand which is like very materialistic important. Turkey is going through rough times economically. Turkish produce, hand production, little producers are very important. So Refikadan is there not to earn money, but to support the whole system and also start to and continue innovation in the kitchens. Same as what we are trying to do for the recipes. Hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for your patience. Take great care. And if you love the products, if you want anything, Refika, you should do this, you should do that. If you have anything like that in your mind, please also share it with me. Me and my team, we're gonna look at it in very much detail, try to achieve what you are dreaming of. Take care.